Good morning. I welcome you to worship on this beautiful Labor Day weekend Sunday, the steam rising from the, the lake this morning, the fog on the way in. What a beautiful day God has made, and what a joy it is to gather and to hear God's words of grace and life for us on this day. We are at the 13th Sunday in Pentecost, this season reminding us that our faith is always growing, always green, always new, always fresh, as God meets us and invites us to follow him along in our faith. So welcome to worship. You will notice if you took a look at your bulletin ahead of time that we have moved announcements to the very end of worship. I should have notified a few of you of that earlier, but we are moving that because of Sunday school starting up in a couple of weeks. So I invite you into a time of worship to welcome God's presence together and to join in praising the God who gives us life. Begin worship with a time of confession, of giving God our brokenness and God giving us forgiveness and wholeness back. If you're able, I invite you to stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, One God who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days. Amen. Dear siblings in Christ, together let us acknowledge our sin and our failure to love as God loves us. I invite you to a time of private confession. And let us confess what's common to us all. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven, and God makes you whole. God points the way to new life in Christ, who meets us along our journeys. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At peace with God, let us sing our praises. Our first song is Earth and All Stars, number 731 in your red book. Earth and all stars, blood rushing planets, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord a new song. God has done marvelous things. I too sing praises with a new song. Trumpet and pipes, loud clashing cymbals, sing to the Lord a new song. Our flute and lyre. Loud humming cellos sing to the Lord a new song. God has done marvelous things. I do sing praises with a new song. Engines and steel, loud pounding hammers sing to the Lord a new song. Limestone and beams, loud building workers, sing to the Lord a new song. God has done marvelous things, I too sing praises with a new song. Classrooms and labs, loud boiling test tubes, sing to the Lord. A new song, athlete and band, loud cheering people, sing to the Lord a new 
song. God has done marvelous things. I too sing praises with a new song. Light and truth, loud sounding wisdom, sing to the Lord a new song. Daughter and son, loud praying members, sing to the Lord a new song. God has done marvelous things. I do sing praises with a new The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us join together in our prayer of the day. Direct us, O Lord God, in all our doings with your continual help, that in all our works, begun, continued, and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name. And finally, by your mercy, Bring us to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated and prepare your hearts for the reading of God's Word. Good morning. Our first reading today is from Deuteronomy. Moses speaks to the Israelites who are about to enter the land promised to their ancestors. In this passage, he lays out the stark choice before them. Choose life by loving and obeying the Lord, or choose death by following other gods. See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I am commanding you today, by loving the Lord your God, walking in his ways, and observing his commandments, decrees, and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you do not hear, but are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying him, and holding fast to him. For that means life to you and length of days, so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to you to give to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. The word of the Lord. Be we will read Psalm 1 responsively. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season. With leaves that do not wither, everything they do shall prosper. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall be destroyed. Our second reading today is from Philemon. While Paul was in prison, he was aided by Onesimus, excuse me, a man who would run away from Philemon, a slave owner, and a Christian friend of Paul. Paul told Onesimus to return to Philemon and encouraged Philemon to receive Onesimus back as a Christian brother. Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our dear friend and co-worker, 
to Aphia, our sister, to Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in your house. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. When I remember you in my prayers, I always thank my God because I hear of your love for all the saints in your faith toward the Lord Jesus. I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective when you perceive all the good that we may do for Christ. I have indeed received much joy and encouragement from your love. Because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you, my brother, for this reason, though I am bold enough in Christ to command you to do your duty, yet I would rather appeal to you on the basis of love. And I, Paul, do this as an old man, and now also as a prisoner of Christ Jesus. I am appealing to you for my child Onesimus, whose father I have become during my imprisonment. Formerly, he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful, both to you and to me. I am sending is him that is my own heart back to you. I wanted to keep him with me so that he might be of service to me in your place during my imprisonment for the gospel. But I preferred to do nothing without your consent in order that your good deed might be voluntary and not something forced. Perhaps this is the reason he was separated from you for a while, so that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So if you consider me your partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he has wronged you in any way or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. I will repay it. I say nothing about your owing me, even your own self. Yes, brother, let me have this benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Confidence of your obedience I am writing to you, knowing that you will do even more than I say. The word of the Lord. In our gospel reading, Jesus speaks frankly about the costs of discipleship, that those who follow him should know from the outset that completing the course of discipleship will finally mean renouncing all other allegiances. Hear the word of the Lord from Luke 14. Now large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and said to them, whoever comes after me, and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even life itself, cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, this fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going out to wage war against another king will not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000? If he cannot, then while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. So therefore, none of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all of your possessions. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to be seated. 
And if there are children present, come on up for our children's message today. Anybody feeling brave today? <laughs> willing and unwilling. <laughs> Can I have a seat? How are you guys today? Good. So far, so good. <laughs> it's always a guess at church, isn't it? Like, are you going to sit and be quiet? How are you guys today? Good. Are you having a good, special, long weekend? Yeah. Are you doing anything special, anything extra fun? You might go swimming today. It's supposed to get warmer. That would be good. If you went swimming right now, you might have to wear your winter clothes while you go swimming. It'd be really cold, isn't it? You would turn into an ice cube, just like a cartoon, right? You'd be stuck in a, in a cartoon ice cube. Have you ever bought anything with your own money before? You have? Like, was it a toy or an extra treat? What have you bought before? Toys and lemonade and stuff. Ooh. Oh, good job. Toys and lemonade and stuff. That sounds like a good idea to spend money on. Did you spend tooth fairy money on that? Birthday money? Maybe Christmas money. You don't know. You just had your own money and had to spend it, right? Yeah. So when you, did you actually get to give the money to the person who was checking out at the store? You did? Did you have to count it? Did you just give her all your money and make that person count it for you? No. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> you, had to, you had to decide, can I buy this toy? Do I have enough money? Right? Is that part of what you had to do when you went and bought something? Yeah. It's about deciding what you want and if you have enough for it. Right? Can you think of other things that you would want to buy? I would like to buy a pass to Valley Fair. To go down to Shakopee and ride all the rides. That would take, what would that take? It would take a lot of money, especially if I was going with my friends. It would cost even more. But what else would it take? Would I have to, I would have to drive down there, right? Yeah, because it's like two hours away. So I'd have to go a long ways. So it's going to take time. It's also going to take a whole entire day when I'm there, right? To play and goof off. Yeah. So I have to decide, do I have a day that I could drive down there and play and pay for all the snacks and all the rides and all that stuff and then drive all the way back. I would have to decide those things, right? Yeah, just like you have to decide, okay, do I have enough money for this toy or for this snack, right? Well, Jesus is talking to his followers today about knowing what they have to do to follow. They can't just get up and go. You got to plan ahead a little bit. Like, what kind of time is this going to take? And what kind of work do I have to do? Jesus asked them to think about that. And so we think about it and we go, okay, if I'm going to follow Jesus, that means I need to take time to talk to God every day. And I need to take time to read my Bible and, and work to understand it. So you can't just read it like you read a regular book and put it down and walk away. You have to think about it. And I'm going to come to church on a Sunday, even when I would rather sleep in a little bit. Right? There's... There's something that it's, we're going to have to do in order to follow God. But you know what the good news is? It's that God is with us to help us. And when we make mistakes, God is there to forgive us and to love us and to keep calling us back, to keep listening and to keep talking. Are you ready to pray with me? Do repeat after me prayers. See? He prays with wiggles <laughs> and trains. Dear God, Thank you for your love, Thank you for your love. That, shows up everywhere. that shows up everywhere. Help me to look for you, Help me to look for you. And, follow you all the time. and follow you all the time. Because you love me, because you love me. Help, me love help me love others. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus name we pray. Amen.
Amen. Thank you guys for coming up. I have some coloring things if you want. You're welcome. You want to color? <laughs> She's going to stay here. She's going to help me with my sermon now. <laughs> have you ever heard the phrase, everything in moderation? Oh, yeah. Have you ever told that to your children, trying to get them to slow down? You don't need that, too. My kids don't understand what that means yet. I don't understand what that means yet. But it's a good principle to live your life by, right? Everything in moderation. It's, it's a good principle when it comes to healthy eating, that you can be healthy and not give up candy or chips in moderation, right? Uh, it's a good principle for exercise, Everything in moderation. You can't work out too hard or you're going to fatigue your body and end up giving yourself physical damage from working out. Uh, everything in moderation. It's also good for relationships. Because if you have too much we time, too much togetherness, you start to lose your sense of self. And if you're too much focused on yourself and what you need, you start to push the other person away. So everything in moderation. It's a pretty good principle to live by. We're starting to see that in, uh, in something that you might have heard of. It's called quiet quitting. It's been really popular in the last month or so. It's the idea of people who are working to keep it in moderation, that they are quitting all the extras of work, that you quit the extra hours, that you quit the extra projects, taking on other people's responsibilities, and you quit this work of always trying to get ahead. This quiet quitting, where you just do what your job is. Nothing more, nothing less. It's a way that we're trying to balance this over-expectation and under-appreciation that currently exists in our culture. The only problem is everything in moderation is not true when it comes to God. God wants all of who we are. And God is not confined to one day a week or one hour a day or what you give to God. God wants all of it. Not like the way we treat work or school or even the service that we do. God wants all of who we are. There is no quiet quitting when it comes to God. Jesus and what he says today is a bit of a foreign concept to our cultural view of what Christianity is. Jesus stands in the, middle of his, in the middle of his ministry, looking out over this vast crowd of people, and he does everything he can to ruin it. He looks at this huge group of people and he says, if you do not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, if you do not hate them, then you cannot be my followers. It's like he's trying to ruin it. And we may want to explain it away by hyperbole, by saying it's, it's how we say, I have a million things to do. But maybe that's not what we should be doing with this. Maybe we should sit with it for a while. As Jesus says this really hard word, Whoever does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, cannot be my followers. Does that make you uneasy a little bit? That's an, an invitation into something. To weigh what it is that we follow. To weigh what it is that we give up and how it is that we move in this life that God has given us. Does it make you uneasy? Because I wonder if that's Jesus' goal. He knows by saying this that there will be people who will leave, who will turn away, who are not ready to, to put God as their first priority in life, who are not wanting to walk away from the things that are important to them because they want to follow God instead. But Jesus is never concerned with the size of his following 
and the movement that he's starting, Jesus is concerned about the heart of the people who are following him. That if there is not a full desire and a whole self that you give over to God, then it's not what God wants. What God wants from us is also what God wants for us. To reorient ourselves, to turn away from the ways that the world does things, where there's quiet quitting and low expectations, where there's God wants us to turn toward a whole view of our lives and our hearts and the way that we follow God. Really, that's what God wanted from the beginning. We read in Deuteronomy 30, it's Moses' last big sermon. It's all one day where he reviews everything that God has already done for God's people and then pushes them forward into the promised land. This whole group of people that had been slaves in Egypt, that were set free, that were brought through the wilderness and given a good way of life, those Ten Commandments and all the other laws, this great way of living in community with God and with each other. And Moses says in front of them, look, I am putting before you life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you follow the commandments of God, if you love the Lord your God, you, live, you will live long in the land that God is promising. If you choose not and you turn your hearts away, then there will be death for you. God has a great hope for the community God is building in us. God has a great hope for us to live in this group of people that are devoted to God that are seeking the same things, that are knowing God and trusting one another and building a community that is centered on Christ, not on our individual desires. God is inviting us into living a whole different kind of way, and it will cost us something. For Philemon, nice job, Carol. Those were a lot of really hard names. (laughs) For Philemon, it cost him a slave. Onesius, see, I can't even do it now. Anisimus was sent back to him as a fellow brother, no longer a slave. And Paul's asking him to give up what was previously his to own. For all the people who are following into this new promised land, it meant turning away from all the different gods that they would encounter to keep the one God as center in their life and let all the other ways of the world fall aside. For us, It's inviting us to consider everything we do in light of God's love for humanity. Not us, but for God's work in this world to bring out that hopeful and healing community. That's what we ask for in the Lord's Prayer every time we pray it. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Sometimes discipleship can be lonely walking in a completely different way than others. People who don't understand, who ignore you, who push you aside because they don't understand why you are following this path of loving God and loving others. Sometimes it can be lonely. But in that same prayer of the Lord's Prayer, God knits us into a community. We have one another to look to for encouragement, to look to for some kind of accountability. This community that we give and we share and we serve based on what God wants from us, not just a few hours on a Sunday, but the care that we live into every day as people of Salem Lutheran. This is what life is. This is the life and prosperity God has for us. To lay aside all things so that we can be the body of Christ together so that we can serve others with God's love together, so that we can grow in our faith and hope and trust of God together. That is what life is, and that is what God hopes for us. And in that kind of world, there is no room for moderation. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ keep Christ first in your heart, And may the peace of God, which surpasses all our understanding, 
Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. If you're able, I invite you to stand. We'll join together in our song of the day. As a sign of God's peace in this community, a sign of our love and our care for one another and for the world, we join together in sharing peace, in reminding one another that we are building something that is peaceful in this community. So may the peace of God be with you always. And also with you. Share the love of God with one another, please. Seated as we join in prayer with one another. We are scattered seeds into God's world. We'll pray and then we'll do offering. (laughs) We are scattered seeds into God's world to plant and bring love in all places. And because of that, we need God's grace and mercy to go with us. So we join together in praying for the world, for the church, and for each individual in need.
Almighty God, we pray for your church around the world and for the mission of the gospel, that you reunite us into one in love through you and for one another, that we may share that love in the whole community where we go to, and that love may be beyond compare to what this world knows. Fill us with your grace, that we may be one in this work. God of grace, hear our prayer. For the well-being of the earth and all its creatures, for trees and forests, for all that will yield fruit this season, for the much that we have to be grateful for, and for the streams and other bodies of water. God of grace, hear our prayer. We ask your strength for the nations and all those in authority, for those that we have elected and those who have been placed over others. May they all seek your justice, your righteousness, and to lift up those who are poor. May their work be the work of many. God of grace, hear our prayer. We lift to you all who are in need, for those who suffer from disease, who struggle with homelessness or food insecurity, for those whose family life is difficult, and for all those who are facing challenges that feel insurmountable. We lift to you especially those who are on our hearts, who are in need of your grace and your strength this day, as we hold them before you silently in this. May you be the strong ground that they stand upon, and may we surround and encourage them. God of grace, hear our prayer. For this community of faith, for all of our labors that are begun, continued, and ended in you, that they glorify your name. Bless the ministry of Salem West and the way that the seed supports it. Bless us who offer our hands in service to others. Give us the strength to live into our many vocations for the sake of the world. God of grace, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the saints who rest from their labors. Give us faith like them to love you with all of our hearts, to trust you against all things, and by your mercy to bring us everlasting life. God of grace, hear our prayer. Gathered together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, gracious God, we offer these and all our prayers to you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And now we bring our gifts to God, sharing them in this community and across this community. Jesus, I surrender all to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in 
Jesus, I surrender. Lord, I give myself to Thee. Fill me with Thy love and power. Let Thy blessing fall on me. I surrender. Let us join in the offering prayer. Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen. Gathered in one community, we are fed by our God with grace and with life. In the night when Jesus was handed over, he took bread. He blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death and resurrection until he returns. We join together in the prayer Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The ushers will guide you forward. You're invited to come forward and take and eat of the bread to take of the cup. If you have need, we have gluten-free wafers. We also have small crackers for children. The outside two rings have red wine, and the inside has white grape juice. So please take what you are comfortable with. And the small cups are placed in the baskets on either side of the sanctuary. We believe that God is present at this table and invites all to eat of this grace-filled meal for us all. Come and know the love and the compassion of our God. Thank you, Audrey. Rid me of myself, I belong to you. 
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. And the grace and peace of God come upon you this day and go with you always. Amen. Amen. Now we are moving to announcements. See how that flows? (laughs) So our first announcement is that the connection is out for September. All of the events that are happening here at Salem, I invite you to grab a hold of that so that you know everything that's happening. September is a full and busy and joyful month. It also explains why we're moving announcements. Announcements are usually about how we live our faith out in the world. And after being filled by God's grace, hearing God's word, we are strengthened into service. So I invite you to read that connection, know what's going on, and and serve and help in this community the best way that you can. Other announcements is that next week we are going to do a backpack blessing for all of those who are students and have the backpacks, or maybe for all those parents that have to pack the backpacks and remind the children to bring them along with them. And do you have your water bottle and did you finish your homework? So let's bless our parents as well. And then all those teachers that end up seeing those backpacks and filling it with amazing creativity. So we are basically blessing everybody that has anything to do with education. So if that's you and you're one of those adults that thrives on coffee in order to function in that work, please bring your coffee mug. Um, We're going to bless everybody that, that we possibly can next Sunday. So that is next Sunday. Please bring those things along so that we can have that visual along with the learning and the joy that's going on this this next school year. There are a few other announcements um, that I'm handing over to other people, so I'm going to invite Chuck forward for a couple of really fun ones. Good morning. 
couple things to share with you all. Uh, some excitement that's happening at Salem West. We uh, spray foamed the back of building number one, the ceiling and the walls. So uh, we've already noticed some um, coolness that's going on in the back there. So uh, the packing and cleaning can go on in a little bit better environment. And as we get to the cooler months, we'll see some benefits back there as well. So if you want to stop up and take a look, see what's going on up there, I uh, invite you all up to see, to see that project completion. The second thing is Lunch Bunch. I can't believe our season is over. It's like, whoa. Thank you to everyone in the congregation who made sandwiches, packed bags, um, made donations of snacks and goodies and peanut butter and jelly. It all added up. Guess how many lunches were served in the community through the five organizations, the Catholic Church, uh, CRMC, uh, the Methodist Church, Emmanuel, and us. How many lunches do you think w went out the door? 4,600. <laughs> <Salem's laughs> Salem distributed over 900. So thank you to everyone. And on behalf of Carla and myself, thank you all. We couldn't have done it without you all help. So. Isn't that amazing? So keep that in mind during the summer. Friday is 9 a.m. If you want to help slap some peanut butter and jelly on some sandwiches or help deliver those things. We didn't keep track of how many books we gave out, did we? We usually get totes of books that come into Salem West that we just cannot move out the door fast enough. And so there's usually totes of books that we hand out to kids too. So we're feeding bodies and feeding minds. And the prayer that you guys surround that ministry with are feeding souls. So thank you so much for that work. A couple other ways that you can serve and use your gifts. Um, handbells are starting up again. If you'd like to sing either with our contemporary songs or in the choir, those practices are going to start up again here in September. Um, Please take some time, try it out. Even if you can do this and you only want one bell responsibility, we can use you because <laughs> it's fun being a dingling. Are, th <laughs> Are there any other announcements for the community and ways that we can use our gifts this week? Ah, we are ready for a little bit of rhythm. And I'm watching. If you're going like this, I'm going to come get you for handbells. So we can start handing out those songs. Let us stand first and give blessing to one another as we sing our blessing together. Thank 
with Christ beside you. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful week. Thank you.